I'm on pot number three. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. I think I'm on like number four. <laughs> That's so horrible. <laughs> now that I so it's three pots of coffee. Yeah, but these things have so much more stuff. It's like Yeah, there's a lot you. of stuff in there. That's for sure. There's going to be a lawsuit. I guarantee you. We're going to be watching a commercial, and it's going to be like, "Did you consume energy drinks when you were younger?" Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> hey, how's it going? My name is uh, Captain James with the Latte Fun Fishing, and today my guest is Joel, a fellow YouTuber. Uh, he has a YouTube channel called The Traveling Angler, and he has a pretty interesting story. Uh, that's it. We're just going to jump in, and uh, I want to hand it off to Joel and let him tell you a little bit about himself. Um, I'm from Colorado, and I have a YouTube channel. It started when uh, I was I got a brain injury, and I couldn't work, so I started traveling and fishing because you don't need a whole lot of brain power to put a line in the water. But I had to relearn all of it from... Everything like I knew how to fish and how to get a bite, but I didn't understand the tactics. I was confused about it, even though I knew how to fish. So it was therapeutic for me to travel and uh, fish and learn that it gave me something to do. Right. And I saw the old people in their RVs and they have it figured out. You know what I mean? Like, right. why don't people, yeah. when they're younger, do the traveling and the RVing and fishing and enjoy life? You know what I mean? But th that's because we can't afford it when we're younger. Oh, I'm broke, man. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have money. No. So. No, I leave and, like, I started working the other day to keep traveling. You know what I mean? To fish and do everything. So, uh, I had people that uh, kept telling me I should do a YouTube channel. Like a traveling fishing one. And finally, I heard it from enough people that I was like, I I'm just going to do it. It's a, a brilliant idea. It really is. <clears throat> Not only do you get to travel and see a lot of areas that other people will never see or get experience in person, yeah. but you get a fish there as well. Yeah. So. Well, and yeah. every every spot's new. Right. To me, 100%. Which is also pretty cool. Yeah. So I know you went out yesterday, mm -hmm. went fishing. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about that trip. Uh, it was my first time offshore, um, so that was exciting. I know I was check some new things off the list. Uh, we went out 150, 250 foot of water. I don't know exactly where, um, and uh, the bite was slow in the morning for me. My buddy Sean, he was he was hooking up though. I always make fun of him, so it was kind of funny. We were saying it was karma because I've given him so much shit, <laughs> right? right. <laughs> that now I wasn't getting nothing. But then I figured out some tactics. Um, I was reeling up too high, so I think maybe they were seeing my weight or something because I was fishing with uh, 14 ounce. Okay. So I realized that when I brought it to the bottom and literally kind of like sheep's head where you put it on the bottom and barely bring it up. I was doing that with it, where I'd bounce the bottom, because sometimes I'd notice that bottom would change, because we're drifting. And when that bottom, sometimes it'd be a hole that goes down four feet or something, you know, and I'd reach for that right. bottom, and I couldn't feel it, so I let out line, let it hit bottom, pull it back up, and they'd hit it. And that's how I started catching the fish. A, a lot of times when I'm drifting, I'll do the same thing. I like to maintain that bottom contact. Mm -hmm. And depending on how I'm rigged, you know, if I've got a a standard chicken rig, you know what I'm saying? A, a two hook. Oh, yeah, rig. yeah. It's so, like a double dropper. Yeah. Okay. Double drop. Uh, <clears throat> but I like that presentation to be straight up and down, and that's how I choose the weight that I'm using. And you guys might find this funny, but I like to store my weights in coffee cans. <laughs> Go figure. <laughs> A latte so fun fishing. We, we go through a <laughs> lot of coffee cans in my house. Uh, but, yeah, so there's a 16-ounce a bottom mm. weight. Yeah, I've got 18s in here, 10s, kind of a mixture. 
in this particular can. I was using and there's uh, several more. <laughs> 14. But, uh, yeah, so you take a, a weight like this, and it's attached to the bottom of your line, and I like to keep that presentation just vertical. So yeah. the, the amount of weight changes based on how deep I'm fishing and the current. Yeah. So if the current's ripping harder, I might have to go to a, a larger weight like this 16 or an 18. But uh, most of the time in the waters that I'm fishing, I can get away with a 6 to an 8. <laughs> Man down. <laughs> Pull down. And the, the benefit... <laughs> God, we need a bigger studio. I think, real. Need, I think you need more rods. I need a couple more. The <laughs> The benefit of having that uh, lighter lead like the six is if you've got a fish on, you don't have to pull a pound of lead up with it. Yeah. You know, it's, it's just a little lighter. But it makes it also easier to feel a smaller bite. And when you're yeah. offshore, there's no small bites. The fish are much more aggressive, wouldn't you say? Yeah. Yeah. So like what, if you're getting pecked, you know it's probably a snapper <laughs> that's about to slam you. Not, not the it's species not you're pin, probably it's looking not a for anyway. Fish. <laughs> <laughs> right. No. And that's a bottom rig that uh, broke right there. I don't know if you can see that yeah. line. <laughs> that's why I like I don't know how it works with uh, offshore but I like the T-knot because then you can cut one of these and then just tie it straight on right and then it's you don't fail like that because I started doing those and I had them fail like that a few times or the get a fish on and because it's worn from the hook being on it or having a fish or something yeah I don't know but well a lot of times uh this one, I think I just got a bit off. It's really chafed. Yeah. But um, it, the hook is not actually tied on. Yeah, it's The loop is just it. run through, yeah. Yeah. Well, so well, and less like, likely to, to break because of the chafe of the hook. But if you've got a hook with a rough edge. Yeah, well, what I realized is when I'd hook up on the fish, this would get worn, like right here, where right. it loops over it. And if I didn't keep an eye on it. I'd hook up and then lose a hook that way. So what? And you know, because you can see it's right in that crease where the hook met. What all fish did you uh, catch yesterday? Bunch of red snapper, which you can expect out oh, there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, amberjack. Uh, what is the It's a grouper? And then a six foot nurse shark. Got that next to the boat. Nice. Yeah. But quick release. <laughs> yeah. um, so if you're if you're watching this on YouTube, we'll throw some pictures up uh, from the fishing trip yesterday right here. Nice. So uh, awesome amberjack, by the way. That thing is huge. Yeah, that was the last fish of the day. I was very tired already. <laughs> yeah, uh, they will wear you out. I was, I was getting, I was getting bumped, and uh, the captain said, "Let's go and reel up." And I'm like, I'm waiting a little bit. <laughs> and I'm sitting there, and all of a sudden, bump, bump, and it just took off. And I'd pull him up, you know, three, four times, and then he'd take off. And from the look of my line, he was, like, getting in the structure, and then I'd turn him and pull him out. Yeah. I don't know how it didn't break. <laughs> but Sometimes you get lucky. Uh, but, yeah, they'll, they'll run you right back to the wreck. Right. And now a word from our sponsor. So, um, 
So you caught amberjack, snapper, grouper, just basically a wide variety of fish. Yeah. And I, I know exactly where you were fishing. Uh, I got some intel from a mutual buddy of ours, uh, um, which is a great spot. And the funny thing was he, he had just told me that on a recent trip there, he didn't catch anything. Really? And we know it's a, a phenomenal <clears throat> spot. So it could have been a, a weather issue, you know, that, that caused some of that, the cold front, you know, if this is winter time in Pensacola. Um, the summertime bite is always better in, in my opinion, yeah. but there's still lots of fish to catch even in the winter. Uh, but they do move fish are migratory in 250 foot of water. The water stays about the same temperature year round. So, you know, that's a good spot for them. And there's a, a lot of other, uh, things that, that cause the fish to either feed or not to feed, but. Yeah, that looked like a, a pretty fun trip. Oh, yeah. We uh, we got to give it to the captain. One motor was going out, and then it started going to the other one. And I was having to pump the ball. <laughs> right. And I come up, and I was like, are we going in? And he's like, I don't give up that easy. <laughs> Which, for most people, that's sketchy. For me, that's exciting. <laughs> right. It just makes the trip more fun, you know. So, he was a soldier. We just pump go to the next spot and we just kept fishing, you know, cause it was pretty slow. Well, we, we went to probably some days it's 20, like 20, 30 even, structures or bumps or holes, you even know without I mean? the engine issue. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes, some days it's, it's like that. It, it can start out slow and then, you know, the end of the day be a killer or vice versa. Yeah. Uh, one of the things that's interesting about this area, um, and, and saltwater fishing in general is uh, it's not like freshwater. There's so many things that are different. There's things that are yeah. similar. There's things that are same. In fact, we were talking about some knots, right, some fishing knots. We use the same ones, freshwater, saltwater. It's the same knot. Mm -hmm. You know, a palomar is a palomar. It doesn't matter where you tie it. You know, an Albright is an Albright. You know, so there's there's certain things that remain the same, and some of the tactics even are are similar. But that morning bite, when you're fishing freshwater, that's usually you want to get out there early. The sun's coming up. Yeah. Sometimes that's Time, true here. Timings, everything. And in the as in the winter, night. as it heats <clears throat> up in the afternoon, sometimes that afternoon into the evening is a little bit better before the water can cool back down. Mm -hmm. So it also depends on the depth of water you're fishing in. There's a lot of things that that come into play. And the I think what makes for a, succe a successful fishing trip is having a captain who knows the area, not just the spot, but the time of day and, uh, and what's going to yeah, you know, be at. your best chance to get on those bigger fish. And those were some nice fish. That amberjack was, you know, 45, 50 pounds, I'm guessing. We didn't measure it. it that, that's a If nice I have to fish. put it back on one of those, I tried to do it as fast as possible. <laughs> right, we, yeah. We set a foot next to it before I picked it up for the picture. That's and a good way to do it. it was bigger than three feet. And the guy had size 13 feet, so. Well, it looked like, it looked like four foot to me. It looked it was, like 48 yeah, inches yeah, for yeah, sure. Yeah, it was it's a nice big. fish. Yeah, he's heavy too. So, um, so how long are you going to be here in the uh, Pensacola area? Well, until I run out of money, but probably till May, April, that's, when I have to go back. That's and work. my plan too. <laughs> yeah. I'm only going to be here until I run out of money. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, May, April. Okay. So. The name of your YouTube channel, if people want to find you, is... The Traveling Angler. The Traveling Angler. Traveling Angler. Yeah, and I'm going to be doing uh, just basic how-to saltwater stuff, more tutorial, and then work my way up, you know, get more. As I learn things, I'm going to do videos and just share it because, I mean, I'm not a professional. I'm just 
sharing my experiences with people. You know, that's something that's often bugged me. It's just my opinion. It's how I feel. So I'm going <laughs> to say it. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> but this is, I, I'm, I never consider myself a professional at anything. I'm always learning. You can always learn something new. And I learn the most from teaching. When I show someone who doesn't know, it, it makes my brain, you know, have to wrap itself around. Well, how do I explain how this, why this works? Why this is the best knot? If I'm tying a boat up, which you've had boats all your life, so you know, mm -hmm pull up to a dock and you've got some, you know, there's always somebody on the boat that says, Oh, I'll help you. And I'm like, Hey, w w why are you tying 18 knots? We're only yeah. here for five minutes. Yeah. You know? yeah. <laughs> we're just grabbing some ice. So we're getting fuel or what have you. Yeah. And, and why do I have all these knots? And now they've pulled themselves tight where they're hard to untie. Yeah. The best knot should be easy to tie, easy to untie. So, you, you know, it's all those little things. And as you're, as you're teaching, as you're showing somebody, at least for me, I feel like I, I really learn. Each time I do it, I learn more about what it is that I just showed him, mm -hmm. you know, in an easier way to, to show the next person, you know, so it's easier for them to understand. Yeah. I know myself. I know I can be... Uh, very talkative <laughs> and convoluted and drag it out and you know just hey once around the horn twist it <laughs> yeah. twist it pull it back done you know and when you do it yourself it just becomes a habit and you really can do it one-handed yeah, you know and tie up loop and <laughs> loop loop done right right yeah. exactly what else we got what's coming up anything you want to where are you going next I don't know. What do you mean? Oh, when I leave here? Yeah. Oh, back to Colorado. So you've, have, you've got a, a business there. Yeah, post-forest fire rehab business. So uh, the wildfires that came through, we get rid of all the trees, dead ones, dangerous ones that might blow over or whatever, and then plant new trees and seed and erosion control. And Okay, gotcha. Yeah. It's how I started that business two years ago when I started my YouTube because I knew I needed a money maker. Right. Yeah. So you got to fund it somehow. It's hard to make money on YouTube. Yeah. No. We don't, do don't. accept sponsors. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you want to sponsor this podcast, click the little bell, click the little button down below there, and uh, I'll be more than happy to take the, the equipment that we use, not just the fishing equipment, all the fishing tackle, but the lights, the cameras. Um, it all costs money. And, uh, you know, each time we try to, to improve and, and deliver a better product, better quality for you guys. So we really do enjoy the comments. If there's anything you would like to know from us, from either myself or from Joel, the traveling angler, be sure to leave a comment down below, like and subscribe. And until next time, I've been Captain James, hoping you have a latte fun fishing. So until next time, let me fix that. Oh, you mother of. <laughs> All right, good enough.